You are listening to the Nightline Sports Network, brought to you by Travis Dever and the Dever team, 386-690-1636. This is WDBO, 107.3 FM and AM 580, Orlando's news and talk. Welcome to Nightline at Night on WDBO, 107.3 FM and AM 580. Night Nation's only call-in show goes live now. All right. Hello, Night Nation. This is Andrew Fegley, and this is Nightline at Night, live from the Dever Team Studios, brought to you by Chad Bar Law, assisting injured veterans get the help they deserve. You can give Chad a call, 407-599-9036, or visit protectingvets.com. You can also call Travis Dever for all your new Smyrna Beach real estate needs, 386-690-1636. And if you need a new or used car, truck, or Jeep, you can give me a call, 386-736-3000. And I will help you out at a Deland Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. Uh, and we'll, we're taking your calls here. You can call us 844-580-9326, 844-580-9326. If you want to talk about the spectacular night weekend of sports, uh, or you can use the open mic feature in the WDBO app. Once again, I'm Andrew Fegley, AP underscore Nightline on Twitter. Got Big Ben Stout here with me at Big Social 32 on Twitter. Also got Roger Phipps at the at uh, Night Bingle on Twitter from the Santa Rosa Beach Studios. And you can find all the rest of our content on NightlineSports.com. <sighs> Glad to get through all that. That's a mouthful. We're back. We're yeah, back, baby. We're back. We didn't do a show last weekend because it, what was it? The Super Bowl? Yeah, was it, it was last Super weekend? Bowl. Okay. Yeah. We missed that one. So uh, you heard a replay for us, but we're live right now. Uh, what a weekend for sports uh, for UCF. So let, let me just run it down here. <laughs> UCF uh, basketball, men's basketball, 69-66 over the East Carolina Pirates. Just ended not too long ago with a buzzer beater. Was absolutely an incredible game. I think even more incredible, though, last night, UCF softball. And I'm not the biggest softball fan. I probably saw the one game that I will see all year long because it was on ESPN. They were doing some... Uh, thing in St. Pete, I think, but UCF was playing Texas. Texas was ranked number nine. UCF was ranked number 24. First of all, for softball to be ranked this early in the season is big. I, I'm not sure. I think that might be the first time they've ever been ranked. Softball ranking is really weird, but I think that might be the first time UCF softball has ever been ranked. Which they is also beat last week um, somebody else that was like 19 or something like that. But anyway, they they whooped. Uh, the score does not tell the story unless mm-hmm. you watch the game 15 to 10 over Texas. Texas was number nine, like I told you uh, last night. Uh, what a game. Uh, if you have chance to see the uh, highlights of that, please look those up and see them. Uh, pretty incredible. Also, baseball on uh, tap this weekend. <laughs> on tap for a couple of reasons, and we'll talk about that as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, Saturday, let's see. Let's start with Friday. UCF over Siena, 12 to nothing. Saturday, UCF over Siena, 16 to 2. And today, UCF over Siena, 18 to nothing. It looks like they have some power on that team. Ben, I know that you went out uh, yesterday, I guess, to see the game. How was the atmosphere out there? What does the new scoreboard look like? I know that that's a big deal for them. Is it up and working? Yeah, the the scoreboard uh, was looking good. The sound system, which is brand new, uh, it, it was it was really rocking. It sounded great. Um, the 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 stadium is a fantastic stadium to to watch baseball in, and uh, and the Knights fans filled it up this this season or excuse, excuse me this weekend, um, and um, UCF against. Siena really put on a show. I mean, uh, uh, Siena is one of those early season tournament every teams year. that comes in yeah. almost every year. They're from upstate New York, so they want to come down here in February and play. And um, and Love Lady talked about prior to the season that he finally has some pitching depth, especially he's got three aces that, that could start um, on Friday at any time. But um, certainly all three of those guys are, are dealing. But he has got some serious um, offensive uh, firepower, uh, something that he didn't necessarily have last season experience wise. And they put on a show this, this, 
uh, weekend uh, to start off the season uh, with, uh, as you mentioned, those scores, some huge uh, offensive outputs. And uh, so UCF royalty throwing out the first pitch as well uh, of the season, Mackenzie Milton, which was absolutely awesome. And then jo- John Rice Plum- uh, Plumley? Plumley, yeah. Plumley was there as well. I saw a picture of him and your kid and, and uh, those guys. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, KZ was, uh, uh, was a little hyped up. It was actually the second first pitch that they oh, showed yeah. on social media. <laughs> uh, uh, he, was, he was really hyped up, and he actually wound up throwing it over uh, Plumlee's head, uh, to, uh, the first one. But uh, he, he threw the second one down the middle as he uh, – he deserves a second chance uh, with Night Nation, Absolutely, no doubt. <laughs> yeah. So Plumlee is not a catcher, though, right? No, he's a center fielder, but he was uh, he still has not gotten cleared His on waiver, the waiver, so. so he was just kind of the ceremonial catcher for. He could do that as a ceremonial yeah. thing. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, talking about new quarterback uh, John Rice Plumley, I guess a quarterback uh, coming from Old Miss. Uh, so he also plays baseball, and you know he looks a lot like Mackenzie Milton in the picture. They're about the same size. They, they look a lot alike. No doubt. It so was... hopefully, I mean, I know he can do it with his legs. We'll see what he can do with his arm. We've talked about that a million times on here. So that'll be interesting. But but man, I, there's probably some other sport that I'm missing here. Another big thing though with baseball and Roger, I promise I will get you in here at some point. You can speak up any time. But uh, Ben, you can buy beer at the stadium for baseball now everyone well everyone that is of legal age no doubt and 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 Bo- available in all sections just not the club and that is a recent development <laughs> as of the Houston game for the basketball arena as well and so um yeah the stadium was a, another great atmosphere just a addition to that um being able to have a few beers and enjoy um, enjoy some baseball on a saturday afternoon it was perfect weather all weekend for that and uh, so yeah i uh, I had, I, that was uh, uh, icing on the cake, if you will, or foam on the beer, <laughs> if you will, <laughs> uh, as, uh, as watching that, enjoying that with uh, my uh, son and, and, and some buddies. Did your son have some beers? Oh, no, not no, at all. Yeah, he's a little too young. <laughs> uh, Roger, you got anything, in, any input on this stuff? Welcome. Well, thank you. Uh, number one, um, you know, softball, That what what a big story it's been this season. Um, they, uh, Coach Cindy Ball Malone, had really front-loaded our schedule, so... Uh, as far as rankings are concerned, um, you know, they beat number 12 Georgia to kick off the season, and they've also beaten number 11 Texas. Now, there's been four losses, including number 18 Tennessee, but this schedule's built to be really, really tough. So that should help them in the long run. As far as baseball is concerned, um, I, I, we didn't mention the new scoreboard. Uh, there was a new scoreboard out I there sure as did. well. <laughs> uh, th- there was uh, some back and forth on, on social media about the script for the s- scoreboard and how that's set up. And uh, UCF said that they would work on that to make it a little easier to read, but it looked good out there from what I can see. Yeah, I can comment on that just real quick. It, the, there was yellow lettering on a white background, and it was difficult to, uh, on certain aspects of the of the scoreboard, so it was difficult to read in cer- um, certain things. But And it was out for a little bit of period of time uh, yesterday, um, but it was it got back quickly. But, yeah, there's little kinks to work out, but um, it, certainly well, the scoreboard it, is big and it looks awesome. Yeah, it's a huge change <laughs> yeah. uh, because I don't know if, if any of you have been out there to see soft or baseball games. The the scoreboard was looked like it was from 1955 and the school wasn't even there. In, you know, so <laughs> uh, that's what it looked like. And. I mean, just the pictures that I've seen of it and stuff like that. I wasn't aware of the Twitter comments, but the pictures that I've seen of it look really awesome. And it looks like they had some fireworks out there, too, which is cool. Uh, that, that game day experience needed to get better um, to get more people out there because I've been to, to games out there where there was literally like 10 people, yeah. which is crazy. Uh, we have a great little baseball stadium and our team has been good over the years. Not, not great, but good. And, and it, you know, it's about time that we, we give them a little extra to do a couple of things, you know, and make that game day experience better. Like I said, yep. uh, but, so back to ba- uh, football, or not football, basketball. We're talking about everything else. We can probably throw some football in here. There's always something to talk <laughs> about with football. Anyway, uh, quite a week of differences for UCF um, in basketball. We talked uh, a little bit about the win against the East Carolina Pirates today, but the other night, not so good against Houston. Ben, maybe... We all talk during these games, um, and we had quite the conversation. 
I, I just feel like we were completely embarrassed against Houston yeah. personally. And the game was winnable at times. And we're, we're going to have a break here in a couple of minutes. I don't want to get too crazy on this, but we'll talk about this a lot during the show. Uh, I just feel like we were embarrassed against Houston and the game was winnable at times. We actually led at one point. Uh, I, I don't know. I just don't understand why, why the guys can't get uh, up a little bit better um, for games like this. It just seems like there's no energy and, and we were totally outclassed. Yeah. And I, I understand that, that Houston is a very good team, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, we we are. I mean, we do need to acknowledge. You just said uh, you did acknowledge it, but uh, I mean, we do need to acknowledge that Houston is a top ten team, top four in the net. Um, but that being said, uh, I, I actually was was happy with the fight at times. They did, you know, they did hang around even in the second half. But uh, as you mentioned, um, we we did get outclassed as a whole as a unit. You know, um, just as a team in general, the, the Houston just plays so cohesive. It kind of doesn't matter who's in the game. Um, they've just got they've just got so much, um, you know, uh, connectivity on defense, and they they are so good at attacking the glass, whether it's the offensive glass or or the defensive side of the ball. Um, they hold teams to one possession, and it was just tough to get anything going. And then Brandon Mahan gets injured right before halftime, uh, kind of hurts his ankle. And we saw a little bit different lineup in the second half that actually, I think, uh, paid dividends in today's game and could pay dividends uh, the rest of the season because um, I liked, liked seeing some of the lineups. But unfortunately, Darius Perry in Brandon Mahan's absence just had a really, really rough game. Um, and and couldn't quite um, hold us together in order to play against the talent that is Houston. Uh, but I'm glad we bounced back today, and we've got some opportunities the rest of the season. Yeah, that was a 70-52 loss. Uh, 70-52. That's just, I mean, you know, uh, it's number 14 versus not ranked. Yeah. So, uh, you know... That's part of it, but and as we've talked about in the fa- in the past, in which I agree with the you know with the thoughts on it, is every opportunity we've had to play a really top caliber team, get those tier one or quad one wins. Unfortunately, we've lost by double digits, with the exception of one game this season. And so we haven't just unfortunately we just haven't been able to prove that we kind of belong with those teams um, that are in the top tier of the country, right? Um, we've had the opportunities to go on the road or even have some of those teams at home. Obviously, we played Houston at home um, where where we, we've we looked like at times we can hang with those teams, but not for a full 40 minutes. And that's something that needs to be addressed as we move forward. But um, but but yeah, that's that's what's struggling. Is it a conditioning a, thing, do you think, or is it just a, a pure athletic type thing? Uh, the difference between these two teams, or is it coaching? That's the other question. Um, I, I probably a mixture of all three. Uh, I don't really see it conditioning being a problem because we do have depth on this team. Uh, at, at times, Dawkins does tighten up that depth and only play about seven seven players or so, um, but. Conditioning shouldn't be an issue with this team. Um, I just think that at times when we struggle, we struggle with shot selection first, which it could be a little bit on coaching, like letting them have a little bit too much freedom on the court. Um, but that being said, our offense revolves around shooting the basketball, and sometimes we die by that three, especially against good defensive teams like Houston. Another question for you real quick. Was Mahan in the game today? Uh, no, he is. it looks like he's going to be out for a while. Um, he, he did not play today, and it uh, looks like he could be out for a, a couple of weeks. We'll see what happens. Not good. All right, we'll talk a lot more about this and a bunch of other stuff when we come back on Nightline at Night. See you soon. An auto accident can change your life forever. At Chad Bar Law, we are raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney. Hi, I'm Chad Barr, and I want you to know that our entire team is dedicated to providing you with the representation you deserve in your greatest time of need. If you or a loved one have been injured in an auto accident, call 407-599-9036 for a free consultation or visit chadbarlaw.com. At Chad Bar Law, our clients come to us in need and leave us family. Offices, Altamont Springs. 
Hey, this is Travis Dever, Kai's Real Estate, the Dever team, New Smyrna Beach. Your source for real estate and everything else, New Smyrna Beach. Proud sponsor of Nightline. Call me anytime at 386-690-1636. That's 386-690-1636. Let me show you my hometown, New Smyrna Beach, UCF's favorite beach. Go Knights and charge on. Looking for more out of your Porsche? Look no further than Flat6Motorsports.com. They have the widest selection of aftermarket Porsche parts anywhere in the world. With over 85 product lines and in-depth expertise, Flat6Motorsports.com is your one-stop shop for any Porsche performance needs. Whether you're shopping for intakes, exhaust, suspension, or tuning, they have you covered. Flat6Motorsports.com is the premier Porsche aftermarket specialist. Check them out at Flat6Motorsports.com. And now, back to Nightline at Night on WDVO 107.3 FM and AM 580. Call now at 844-580-9326. All right, back on Nightline at Night with you. I'm Andrew Fegley, live from the Dever Team Studios, brought to you by Chad Barlaw. Uh, I mentioned uh, what I, I mentioned: softball, baseball, men's basketball. We talked a little bit about football, just sporadically in there. And uh, I forgot to mention anything about women's basketball. Women's basketball this year for UCF, they've got a heck of a team. Uh, doing really, really well. Uh, Twenty and three overall. Twelve and one in conference. Uh, leading the conference by far. Uh, probably the best women's basketball team that we've had in in quite a long time. Um, Roger, I know that you pay pretty close attention to the women's basketball thing. What uh, What do you have to say about that? Well, a few things. Um, you know, this is the third consecutive season that Coach Abe has uh, guided our Knights uh, to a 20-win season. So that's a huge accomplishment. Um, in the past, UConn was a bugaboo for us. And then uh, that with their departure, now it's basically us and the Cows. And we took both of those games this season, which is phenomenal. Um, and they're doing it with defense. The last three games... Um, you know, the, the opponents scored under 35 points. So 68 to 31, 60 to 35, 54 to 33 against the Cows. So this is a uh, defensively dominant team. So they're not only just getting it done offensively, but that defense that Coach Abe has been preaching is coming through. And, um, you know, we had Tay Sanders and Diamond Battles um, and Alicia Lewis that's providing the offense for us. But really the story of uh, this season has been um, how the, uh, how the ladies are playing under the hoops. Uh, you know, Destiny Thomas, uh, came back. She's a junior this year. She's playing, f- uh, phenomenal. Masami Kaba and Brittany Smith. Um, they've been able to clear out, uh, and earn those rebounds. And that's really, really helped, um, our guards really press and, and trap. And just, if you watch them, they're doing it the entire game. The, the energy is just, uh, palpable. And Coach Abe really has them going. And this will be a tournament team. And uh, the expectation is after the next game, uh, they'll win the American regular season championship and go into uh, the tournament as the heavy favorites. And I, th- I believe that's, that'll be the first time since we've been in the American that we've actually won the regular season title. So we're set up to do that. We play Cincinnati next, um, the, which is the only loss that we've had in conference. So that'll be another another test as we finish out this season. But you're right, uh, Roger. It reminds me a little bit of that 2018-2019 um, UCF men's team that had Taco in the middle, and it allowed their guards to just kind of to play the the perimeter so tough and so pressed up because they knew they had that protection behind them if their player got by them. And, and I agree. I mean, Brittany Smith, Masini Kaba have just been fantastic in the middle. And, I mean, we've even had the offense where Lish Lewis was starting most of the game, um, most of the games last season. She's able to come off the bench and provide that instant offense uh, in a lot of the games this year. And uh, so Coach Abe really has some talent on that team. But the execution that they have on both ends of the floor, especially the defensive end, is really impressive. We're, we are number two in the nation at, at scoring defense we've we've held our opponents to under 50 game 50 points a game 
for the second year in a row, and it looks like we're going to continue to do that. And we're top three in the nation in field goal percentage defense. Um, so that that defense is just really stellar, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do the rest of the season. Yeah, so the only losses here coming against uh, number 14, Iowa, number 15, Tennessee, and then Cincinnati. So uh, they're peaking at the right time, it seems. Uh, those A couple of those losses came earlier in the season. So hopefully uh, come the conference tournament coming up here and then you know the, the big tournament, hopefully they will get into that and, and do some good out there and, and make us all proud. Good job, ladies. All right, we're going to take another break, and we'll be right back on Nightline at Night. If you haven't figured it out yet, I love Tijuana Flats. I would love them even if they weren't a partner with us on the Nightline Sports Network. They have all kinds of great Tex-Mex food, and it's fresh, by the way. Made to order burritos, tacos, enchiladas, chimichangas, quesadillas, bowls, nachos, and taco salads. And if you haven't tried the queso, you are completely missing out. It is the best queso that I've ever had in my life. Absolutely hands down. And the sauce bar that they have... Everything from wild to mild in there. Absolutely awesome, awesome stuff. Not only do I love the food at Tijuana Flats, but I love the company, a UCF-born company. And they give back to the community with the Justin Queso Foundation. So head to your local Tijuana Flats. Tex-Mex for everyone. Hey Jeep Wrangler owners, have you ever sat in your office at work and watched the rain just pour into your Jeep because the weatherman said that there was a zero chance of rain or you put your doors back on because there was a 100% chance and then not a drop of rain fell? Well, there's a company out there that can help take the worry away and give you the peace of mind to be without your doors. The company's called Life Without Doors. They make waterproof rain curtains and dash covers for Wranglers. Life Without Doors is there to help make the decision to leave the doors at home an easy one. Find out more at lifewithoutdoors.com. Spice up your company with homemade marketing services from Tasty Gravy Creative. Tasty Gravy serves up the menu of budget-friendly marketing, graphic design, and public relations services customized to your specific goals. Co-owned by a UCF graduate, Tasty Gravy can help refresh your brand, strengthen your online presence, or reinforce your company's message. Contact Tasty Gravy for help with your website, social media, marketing, advertising materials, and more. Visit TastyGravy.com. And now, back to Nightline at Night on WDVO. 1073 FM and AM 580. Call now at 844-580-9326. All right, back on Nightline at Night, live from the Dever Team Studios, brought to you by Chad Barlaw, assisting injured veterans get the help they deserve. Give Chad a call 407-599-9036 or visit protectingvets.com. You can also call Travis Dever for all your new Smyrna Beach real estate needs, 386-690-1636. And if you need a new or used car, truck, or Jeep, you can call me, Andrew Fagley, at 386-736-3000. Or visit me at Deland Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Deland, Florida. Uh, we're taking your calls here, 844-580-9326, 844-580-9326. If you want to talk about UCF sports, or you can use the open mic feature in the WDBO app. Once again, I'm Andrew Fegley at AP underscore on night on... <laughs> I messed it up at AP underscore nightline on Twitter. And uh, I got big Ben stout with, with, with me here at big social 32 on Twitter. Also Roger Phipps at night bingle on Twitter. And he is coming from the Santa Rosa beach studios. And you can find all the rest of our content on nightlinesports.com. Okay. So <laughs> uh, back to basketball. I think today's basketball, I think is, is what you want to talk about there. Uh, ben 69, 66 win over the East Carolina pirates. Yeah. As you mentioned earlier in the game, earlier in the show, Andrew, I mean, obviously it finished in spectacular fashion. Um, it, really felt like the entire game with Brandon Mahan out of the game kind of 
it kind of seemed like we were kind of trying to find ourselves offensively a little bit. Um, and, and it, it kind of felt to me, it kind of felt like going against a lesser talented team in ECU, even with Brandon Mahan out and a team that actually usually does wind up, um, letting up a lot of points in, in the, their defense isn't really that great um, throughout the season. It it felt a little bit like the Temple game at home in early January, the one that I was on the call for, where we just kind of let them hang around and uh, didn't really pull away at any point. And then, and then they kind of took the lead at the end and we we're going to lose it. And, and I w- luckily that didn't happen. But I will say that one of the reasons that that didn't happen is because uh, we got some great play out of out of um, our freshman point guard Darius Johnson made uh, uh, another start this game um, played spectacular I think kind of running the offense he actually looks to have his shot back he went two of three from the three point uh, line uh, today which um, something that he has struggled with at times uh, but eight points eight rebounds and six assists that's a nice all-around game for him a little bit of a bounce back game for um Darius Perry with 12 points himself uh Darren Green Jr. had another great game um with 19 points and obviously had the game winner which everybody in the building knew it was going to Darren Green Jr. there Um, but then the last guy I want to highlight is 23 big minutes off the bench for Ty Freeman Ty M. Freeman has somebody in that Temple game that I just mentioned, he made a big mistake towards the end of the game, and I think mentally he has not been the same player since. And to see him come back and have a bounce-back game today with 11 big points, he had four rebounds and, a, and an assist. He didn't really blow up the stat sheet, but just his presence, I think, and his energy and his athleticism was was big in this game, and it was the key, I think, to being right there at the end and then ultimately winning. So great to have him back. We're going to need him down the stretch. And now we're looking at a scenario, just to wrap that up, we're in a scenario with three games left um, to try to move ahead one slot in the American Conference to get at least get the fifth place in the American uh, conference because that will earn us a buy in the conference tournament. And that's a, uh, that's going to be really important going into the conference tournament to try to make some noise in that uh, with the tough teams that are in there, the, some of which that are playing really well, especially Houston and Wichita state. Well, we talked last week. Uh, we were, I was a little bit down on Johnny Dawkins. Right. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, and I, I think we gave like some, some, in our hot takes, we uh, at least I said if if we didn't win four of these, uh, or we wouldn't win four of these five or seven or whatever, something like that. I can't remember what. It yeah, was, your hot but, take was that we would lose four of the next seven, and since then we've won three of the last four. Well, there you go. That's yeah. why it was a hot take. So, yeah. uh, and I'm, I'm not saying you're wrong. We've got three games that are really tough the rest of the season. Yeah, so. the three last yeah. games, yeah. I think we will struggle a little bit uh, with, but. Uh, you know, besides the Houston game since then, it's been fairly positive, especially against Wichita state, which we've always struggled against, um, who took Houston to double overtime today, almost beat them. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. They've been playing excellent, uh, second half of the season. Yeah. So, you know, I I probably should lay off a little bit on Johnny, uh, but I I would just like to see this team have a little bit more energy and keep their heads in it a little bit more. Uh, You know, there's just been some weird things all season long. Um, Slow starts, you know, soft finishes, you know, there's just been uh, quite a few things. There are good things about what's been happening since I said that, and there there's some bad things. I mean, Houston, I think that was an embarrassment, even though they're ranked number fourteen. Yeah. Um. You know, I, I just feel like w- anybody in our conference, we should be able to play with a little bit closer than that, no matter what their rank is. We're going to the Big Twelve. Uh, you know, a lot of those teams are going to be ranked in the Big Twelve. No doubt. It, we're in a good basketball conference already, but it's definitely going to step up. Oh yeah, it's the best in the nation, uh, and I don't think you're wrong for 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 any criticism that you've put on Johnny Dawkins or this team this season. I think that uh, the reality is right now we're sitting at uh, you know 16 and nine, and we've got three games left before the end of this regular season. And let's let's see how this team responds and how well they do, um, and, and then we can reserve that for right after this season is over, uh, wherever that may take us uh, for. Um, how we ultimately decide uh, what Johnny Dawkins should be um, 
moving forward with. During the Houston game, we talked a little bit, and I want to bring this up because uh, I said something like, you know, this it's time, obviously, to get rid of Johnny Dawkins. I think something like that. And we started talking about um, – the, the parody between football and basketball money and what that does to a program. And, and I sent you a thing that I found online that was a little crazy uh, about UCF sports. And, and we all know that football pays the bills for a lot of things, but it was a percentage um, thing with, with men's sp- or with sports at UCF. I think it was men's sports profit uh, UCF net profit loss uh, w- Profit or loss by uh, men's sports, and and it was it's it's crazy uh, to see that men's football has like a five and a half million dollar profit on each year or whatever, and and men's basketball and all the rest of the sports are, are not profitable whatsoever, which is kind of blows my mind. But you also said when I said it's time to fire Johnny Dawkins or whatever, you said, with well, what are we going to do? With what money are right. we going to hire anybody? So what is the solution, I guess, to – I mean, is it money that is holding our, our basketball team back from – is it facilities? Is it – what do you think needs to improve to get that – that sport profitable or, or whatever. I mean, cause I always talk about, you know, the fans be not being there and empty seats look bad on television and, and everything like that. So profit is a hard thing to look at when you look at the, look at a numerous sports at a university, in my opinion, because 95% uh, in my, I believe, I, I mean like probably 90% of colleges around the nation are really only making money in one sport. If they have a football team, that's the one uh, we always talk about football driving the ship, right? So you're only going to see profit in maybe one or two sports at a particular university across the country. Um, but it's really about budget, in my opinion. It's about how the university takes any profit that they can get and how they spend it, how they allocate those funds. And of course, they should be proportional to football because you got to have a successful football program to continue that profit train. Um, but uh, when it looks at when you look at UCF compared to other schools in our conference and then other schools in the nation, we do not have a very big budget for basketball. Um, it's somewhere around, I believe, around, you know, four and a half million a year. And you and you could say that, yeah, that's a lot of money, but that's half of what Houston spends on their their basketball <laughs> their basketball team every year and uh and 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 it's and it's less than um at least half of our conference our current conference if you look at the current big 12 it's dead last by a lot uh four and a half million a year is not even close to the basketball budgets of the school in the big 12 obviously we're going to get a lot more revenue coming in and so just some of the attention that needs to be paid to this, in my opinion, is as we get a lot more revenue coming in with those Big 12 contracts, let's just make sure that we put some of that allocation of funds towards improving and um, really pushing forward the men's basketball team because we really haven't had much investment since we built the arena. And that's been a very long time. That's been a long time ago. Yeah. So we need more We need more improvement on that side as well, in my opinion, when the investments come coming from – um, our university. Alrighty. Well, I just wanted to ask you about that because I know yeah. that that was a topic that we were talking about the other day. Real quick here before our break, I want to get into the football schedule coming out. Uh, UCF's 2022 football schedule. Uh, we know who we're playing and and when we're playing them, just not times. Uh, we have dates though for everything. So UCF starts off against South Carolina State on September 4th, then versus Louisville. September 9th at Florida Atlantic, September 17th versus Georgia Tech on September 24th at uh, or no versus uh, SMU as well, October 1st. Uh, So we have three home games in a row right here. October 1st versus SMU, October 13th versus Temple, October 22nd at East Carolina, October 29th versus Cincinnati, uh, November 5th at Memphis. November 12th at Tulane, uh, November 19th versus Navy. And then uh, obviously November 25th will be at South Florida. So 
Uh, and then the AAC championship, which I fully expect us to be in, is December 3rd. So seven home games and uh, only two out of the state of Florida, which is uh, should be a really, really a good boon for us, uh, obviously monetarily, but also from a scheduling perspective and setting us up to win. Also, one of the first times that we'll have two uh, power five teams on that schedule in the same at home, I believe, was the thing that they were touting about that. So that's cool. Uh you know, this this schedule, we, we already knew who we were going to play. We just didn't know the dates and everything like that. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, do you guys have anything real quickly to say about uh, this football schedule? Yeah, I, the Friday night showcase game against Louisville, uh, I think that getting revenge for last season is one that are in the early season, the out-of-conference that I'm really looking forward to. A couple Thursday games on here as well. The September 1st, the first game is a Thursday night game at home, and then October 13th is also a Thursday evening game. Uh, which is, I, I don't really have a problem with those games. Um, it's great for television eyes. So I'm good with that. That October well, 13th thing, Thursday game is going to be the space game as well. So they're guaranteeing that night game is a, a, a night game is a space game. Absolutely. All right. We're going to take another break here. We'll be right back on Nightland at Night. I'm Jeff Allen. Join me each and every week on the Nightline Sports Network for the AAC Report. We bring you in-depth coverage of each school in football, basketball, baseball, softball, soccer, golf, tennis, and more, as well as bring you insider interviews and focus in on the biggest games and news of the week. That's all right here each week on the AAC Report, only on the Nightline Sports Network. Welcome. This is is a promo for the Take a Left at Albuquerque podcast new to the Nightline Sports Network. You should listen to it. I say things like this. We need to stop blaming Jerry because we would do the exact same thing if we owned the Dallas freaking Cowboys. Do you know how much fun it is to own the Dallas Cowboys? My guests will say things sometimes like uh, this. It's, it's the Lord of the Flies thing that happens when they don't understand that things are wrong spoiler alert until piggy dies yeah. um Lord it, it, of the flies has been out for like it, like 100 years it, like, it, i don't it, even know yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry sorry to everyone at home yeah. who i spoiled the book for a book's been out for like 90 years or something and sometimes rarely though i'll say really stupid things like this if they don't make it out of the west and the raptors get to the finals I will go on either this show or whoever show and say that Kawhi Leonard is overrated. I just because I have too much evidence of it. New episodes drop every Friday with me and some of my good friends right here on the Nightline Sports Network. And now back to Nightline at Night on WDBO 1073 FM and AM 580. Call now at 844-580-9326. All right, back on Nightline at Night. I'm Andrew Fegley, uh, live from the Dever Team Studios, brought to you by Chad Barlaw. It has come the time of the show where we do our Tijuana Flats Hot Take of the Week, so let's get to that. Welcome to the Tijuana Flats Hot Take of the Week. Visit TijuanaFlats.com for takeout or delivery, or visit your local Tijuana Flats. Tex-Mex for everyone. All right, Tijuana Flats, uh, the best fresh mex, uh, Tex Mex fresh mex that you can get. Period out there. I'm uh, I'm having a little bit of a withdrawal. I haven't been there in in a couple weeks, so uh, there's no real reason. I've just been working on the other side of the t- uh, other side of town, and there's not one close to me. I don't think so. I need to check that out. Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, if you want great food, go to. Tijuana Flats, uh, they take care of us, and they'll take care of you as well. They'll take care of your tummy. Good stuff there. Tijuana Flats, hot take of the week. Ben, you got want to start off with Ben, or we want to start off with what Roger? We, who, whoever wants to go, go. Go ahead, Ben. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. I just thought of this one, so it's not, it's not, a, it's not a 
Well, I'm going for it. It's uh, I'm saying we got three games left in this men's basketball season, regular season, before we go into the conference tournament. We need to get, as I mentioned earlier, the the fifth seed going into that tournament so we can get a bye. Uh, Cincinnati is senior night at home, our last home game of the, of the season this Thursday, and then we got at Tulane and at Tulsa. It's going to be a tough road, but I'm saying we go finish out the regular season 3-0 and and carry some momentum into that first round by in the conference tournament to uh, move forward and hopefully win a few games there and make some noise. All right, Roger. Awesome. Yeah, for me, I'm going to go with the basketball uh, theme, but I'm going to go on the women's side of the uh, court and I'm going to say our women's basketball team will be a sweet 16 team this year. They should be ranked higher than they were last year going into the tournament seating seated higher which will make it a little bit easier. That was tough last year. Um, And I expect this team to win. um, They've got all the pieces to make a big run. All righty. I'm going to go to football. Uh, I'm going to, because the schedule came out and I was kind of looking at it and what can we, you know, the, the thing that stands out to me is versus Cincinnati at home on homecoming. That's a big deal. Uh, When you bring kind of your, I think a rival um, at this point. I've always thought that, that Cincinnati should be one of our rivals. Uh, also go following us to the Big 12 as well. Uh, could easily kind of make a rivalry there. And then homecoming. A- and we're playing them at home this year. We really need a win against Cincinnati. We've dropped two in a row to them, I think. Uh, the last time they were here, it was it was a three-point game. And uh, it was, you know, during the whole COVID thing, there was no fans in the stadium. I think it's time to reintroduce Cincinnati to the bounce house uh, with fans in there, obviously. And I, I think that we're going to go, I'm going to say right now, we're going to go, we're going to be 7-0 and going into that game. 7-0, and I know that there's questions on a lot of things on football, but I'm going to say we're going to be 7-0 and going into that game, homecoming October 29th versus Cincinnati. There's some questions on their end as well and how are they going to replace their quarterback uh, going into this season and so that but they could easily be 7 and 0 as well and that'll be a big time showcase game potentially Saturday night, you know, you know, big time game depending on what else is going on across college football. So that that'll Maybe be Maybe even big time. you know game day would want to come back for uh, UCF and Cincinnati. They were here the last time. This is a marquee game in our conference and really uh, could be a marquee game uh, you know, in the United States, like you said that mm-hmm. for college football period. So Roger, you got anything else really, really quick? No, I'll just say, I'm looking forward to that game too. I mean, they're coming off the uh, playoff appearance. Um, and so I think it's going to be a, a massive game. Can't wait to get our folks back in and make it loud and proud. All right. We're out of here guys. Uh, thank you very much for listening. We'll be back next week. Same time, same channel. Go Knights. Charge on. <laughs>